let's go over how Onshape can do assemblies, how they'll save you time, and how they compare to traditional ways of doing this on legacy CAD systems. Now, Onshape does do assembly mates differently from other systems, but as you'll see during today's demonstration, that it's done with the intent to make your life quicker when assembling components. What you see here in front of you are two split screens. They show the same product with the same feature tree and all the same features included with it. The only difference is that on the left, we'll be doing this in a legacy CAD system way of mating. And on the right, we're gonna do this how Onshape would do their mates. I'll go side by side during today's demonstration and show you how they'll work exactly comparing to one another. Now, to start on the legacy side, traditionally you'll add every single component as its own individual file into your assembly. Since Onshape uses part studios where you can design components in a multi-part context, you can even start your assembly by inserting the entire part studio itself. If you have multiple instances of another part, you can insert another instance on your own. Now we have the same assembly being created on both screens. Nothing's been mated yet, but what I will do first is fix the stator for this motor to the ground. This is gonna make sure this doesn't move when we need to add motion into our designs. Let's start designing. In Onshape, when you work with components, it's always gonna show you when it has open degrees of freedom. And in legacy CAD systems, if I wanted to add this backplate to the back of this stator, then what I would end up doing is start with making sure the faces of the back cover and the stator are flat against each other. Then I'd have to go about the process of making sure that they were cylindrically met together to make sure that they were guided properly. And I'd have to take away a rotational degree of freedom with one more cylindrical mate. Now with the way that Onshape works, we see this as many unneeded steps for how to assemble these components together. So with Onshape's way of mating, and we do this with what are called mate connectors. These help you define the location and the degrees of freedom associated with two components being mated to one another. What you see here on the screen is our mate connector. It takes a certain face, a coordinate system, and a point on that face. This will appear at edges, midpoints of lines, centers of faces, and other readily used components for mating parts together. So if I want to mate this face at this center point to the face of the stator, then I just have to choose this center point and line it up with the center mate connector on the stator. And now this is fully defined in the same way that a component would have been fully defined in a legacy CAD system. However, it's done with one mate instead of three. Our mates have degrees of freedom. And since I don't want this to rotate, I use it as a fastened mate. But if you ever need to change the degrees of freedom of your mate, then since there is a coordinate system associated with the design, if I need it to say revolve around a certain axis, then I'd use a revolute mate and then it'll revolve around the Z axis of that mate connector point. You'll catch on as you start to do this more and more, but really understand how quickly this is gonna help you define all of your assemblies much quicker. I'll throw through that same process again from the legacy standpoint for the front cover where I have to go ahead and I have to select that flat face and made it with that flat face and continue to cylindrically mate the circular outsides of the design. And then make sure the holes line up. Now we have these components and there are two great things about designing in an on-shape part studio. 
One is it makes sure that all the components are sized properly, but two, it makes sure that they actually come in already in the direction in which they need to be facing. So we see these two center holes. They're not rotated at any angle. There's just distance in the Y direction between them. So that when I go and create my second fasten mate to define all these components, they're already facing the correct angle on these mate connectors. And all I need to do is make sure that it's aligned with the center point from the original center point. And these holes at the end of the mating process without having to do any work to the angle in which those were connected are already in line with one another. So now we're at two mates versus six. Here's where the fun part starts. If you were to work with something like the copper winding that we use to represent the internal wires that are going to be used on this motor, this is a pretty complex shape that doesn't have much geometry that would be great to mate to by its own. If you were using a legacy system, what you could do, and even though I'm doing this in on shape, I'm still going to mimic the ways you would do this in a legacy system. What you would probably end up doing is add a plane at the center of this face and an axis going along the center of the row of the stator and the copper winding. On shape doesn't need planes when defining these components. But if you really want to give those reference points, then what we can add to these designs are more mate connectors. When you do this at a part studio level, you can select components to relate these mate connectors to. So ultimately, I want the winding to be related to the center face of the stator. I can select to choose a mate connector that's already defined at the center of this stator on the center face or what would be the center face if it was sliced in half at the center axis. Because I can choose a center axis because it's a normal shape, I can choose to actually drop this mate connector rather on the abstract shape of those coils. I'll do the same thing with a mate connector that I can add to the origin of this stator. This will make sure that the coils are facing properly. And a side note here is that you can always use the origin as reference for a mate connector. I can move these mate connectors around and realign them to the right axes. And I'll make sure that this is owned by the stator part, but then I'll make the same mate connector using those same reference techniques on the coils as well. So now we have reference points when we go back to the assembly. Treat these like you would planes in a legacy system. Now I can say, make sure that these two, what would be planes with their mate connectors in a legacy system align with one another. So now this is planarly located. We can make sure that the center of this, what would be a center plane in a legacy system, lines up with the center of this cylindrical portion of the design. And then if there are any other mates that need to happen at any of these points in time, then those can be defined. So we have two planar mates, but let's make sure that we have a cylindrical mate to keep this within the cylinder of the stator as well. Now this is fully defined between the copper winding. If you were to use on shape system of mating, an abstract object like this still requires a little bit of work if you want to truly define them together. However, since they're created in the same part studio and we're able to automatically interact with the middle point of the stator, all I need to do is add that reference mate connector, attach it to the representation of the coils, and now inside the assembly where we have the copper winding for this part, I can take that mate connector that I just created, use another fastened mate because I want it to rotate with the stator and select the middle point that we used as reference in the part studio. And now these are fully defined.
the only thing for these parts that we have left to actually assemble together is the rotor itself. This is the only object relative to the other components that's going to be moving in our design. Now to help me set this up, I'm gonna take a section view, but exclude the rotor. If we were to do this in a legacy system, what you would have to do is go ahead and define the planes in which these faces are going to be set up between one another. And then you'd cylindrically constrain those center faces with the location of where a bearing will go in the future. And then if you needed to, then you define a way to lock this to a certain angle. However, I want this to have freedom of motion on both ends. So you can go ahead, you can see that it has freedom of motion, the ability to rotate. Whereas in Onshape, because we already have mating references ready to go, and we have degrees of freedom included with our mate types, this is where a Revolute Mate can come into play. Here, I'll select that center of that planar face of the rotor. And again, once align it with the opening for the bearing that we'll add in just a moment. With just one mate, we've now defined how this rotor will move relative to the other components in the design, all within on shape, and only four mates as opposed to 11. There are a couple more things that will be needed to add to the design to make sure that this motor is fully finished. If you were going to take this from another system, you'd have to go find the other files that you're working with. In Onshape, you can search through your documents to find components that you need. In this case, we need to add two bearings, which will again be mated, and we'll need to add some hardware. So from our company library, we can insert a non-standard fastener, which is this M4 hex bolt. There are all these components now inside of our design. If I were going to add these bearings in a legacy system, then I would need to go through the process of choosing the center of that face, aligning it with the center of the opening of the back plate, making sure that they're cylindrically mated to one another. And depending on how your company is going to define this, then you'd want to define whether that bearing needed to move or not. So what could be two mates could also be three. Depends on how you set up the bearings and you manage whether they move in the bearing or they move in the assembly. You'll do the same thing with that second bearing on the design. Make sure that it fits in that location. It's planarly located and that it's cylindrically located. And I'll go do this the Onshape way. I'll insert this into my Onshape document. I can choose from the hardware library that I have available. This will be both of these bearings once again. And I'll insert that non-standard bolt as well. We have the same parts in the assembly. However, the process of adding those bearings, again, will be much quicker and on shape. All I'll have to do is fasten them to the center face of that location at the center point. And there we have it, the bearings are added in. And the last thing to do is add in my fasteners. With legacy CAD systems, you'd have to mate the face of this fastener to the face of the back plate. And to continue constraining this fastener, you wanna make sure that in the design that 
if you were fully constraining them, that the face of this fastener will line up with the face of what would be the right plane. And let's make sure that it is mated correctly to the cylindrical hole that it's located on. And as a final step on the legacy side, you could insert a nut. In this case, it's from Onshape's standard content library because we have this built in for any standard components that need to be used. You could add this nut directly onto the planar face of the plate. Align it cylindrically with the bolt that it's on. And then again, parallelly line the nut with the right plane to make sure that it is fully constrained. And in this case, it might even break sometimes depending on over constraining your assembly here. So you wanna be careful if you were using these techniques in Onshape, I would highly suggest using Onshape's way of mating. You can still go about this process, but just know that all your components might not be constrained properly if you're using these techniques. So if I was gonna finish off this design, the last step that I would take if I were using a legacy system would be to choose an axis of rotation. In this case, you would use something like the center axis and choose to add those on. Now the design is fully constrained. We have the bearings, we have the nuts associated with the bolts on the design, and it's taken about 20 mates with how you do it in a legacy system. However, in on shape, it's much quicker. You can use a fastened mate to fasten the center of the cylindrical bolt at the face to the center of where the plate is going to line up with the stator and then connect to the end of the front plate as well. This is already fastened, so I don't need to worry about any sort of movement that might happen because it's not constrained due to a certain angle. And then I could continue to use Onshape's standard content library to actually drop this in. And what we're able to do with these models, we can use Onshape's auto size functionality to make sure that it's sized properly. And I can even choose to insert it at that cylindrical opening on that face. And I could either use Onshape's replicate tool or a circular pattern to finish off my design and make sure that all these components are set up properly. Again, I could either use that axis that was created before or even another cylindrical face on the design. But what we've been able to do here is complete the design of this motor with all the same motion on both sides with eight mates compared to 20 using a legacy mating technique. This is a unique experience that only Onshape is able to offer because of its advantages. And I hope this helps everybody learn a little bit more about mating.